In the previous series of videos, we we're developing a catching game. In the first few videos, we set up our catcher who will move back and forth. You can see him here. Then, in the next videos, we set up the objects for our catching game that are going to fall from the sky, basically, and then the catcher has to basically move back and forth and try to catch the objects as they fall. Now, as you can see, we've got it working, except they're not catching them. And so, in this video, we're going to work on the collision detection, which will allow us to actually catch these objects and increment a score. So we'll do the collision detection, a scoreboard, and then we'll add some sound. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to close this window, and if you want to work from this file, you can go to my website at danscourses.com and go to the catching game, and this will be on catching game part three. And you'll find this file, collision detection one underscore begin. Okay, so what I've done is I've put the code that we're going to be using down here at the bottom, and I've graded it out, and then I'm going to just add it into our code above and then discuss it as we add it line by line. Now, the first thing that we're going to need is not only the collision detection, but our scoreboard. So I'm going to get the text tool, and I'm going to type the word score here, and I don't want this to be dynamic text. You can see right now the um, text box is indicating in the property window that this is dynamic, this is a dynamic text box. So what I'm going to do is I'll change it to static text, and I'm going to put a colon here. I can adjust the size of the box a little bit. If I want to, I can also adjust the size of the font, and I'm going to change it from anti-alias for animation to use device fonts. All right, that looks good to me. So there is my text box. Now, I've placed this text box on my actions layer, and I don't want that. So I'm going to select it, do a control X on my keyboard to cut it, and then I'll just paste it on this layer three here where the rest of the objects are located. So I'll just do a, move this out of the way, edit, paste in place. And you can see there it pastes in nicely. All right, I'll get another text box, and this time, for this text box, I'll just click here. This text box, I do want it to be a scoreboard, so I'm going to change it to dynamic text, and I'll just drag this out a little bit. And as a dynamic text box, this is where our score will go. What I need to do is I need to give it an instance name up here. So I'm going to give it the name score underscore txt for score text. And Arial, regular, uh, use device fonts, that's f fine. Now, if you're going to use a fancy font and um, you're going to be, let's say, moving this file, you're working on it in a school and you're going to be moving it from a lab to your home back and forth, if you're going to use a fancy font, what I recommend you do is, is highlight the font and then click the embed button here and then embed the font character that you're using. You can embed all of the characters or just the uppercase, lowercase, or numerals. So I'm just going to embed this to show you how that works. So now I've embedded the Arial font into my Flash movie for authoring. Okay, and if I select this dynamic text box, you can see it says score underscore txt. If I deselect, I should see a dotted line around it. Okay, now it's time to work on our code. For our code, I'll highlight the keyframe that has the action script on it on my actions layer, and I'll open up my actions window, and I'll scroll down and I get the first part that we're going to work with first thing we're going to do is work with our scoreboard. So I'll copy this, and I'm going to paste it right above this function cow move. All right, you'll see here. I'll put it right there. And you can see that I'm going to add a variable var space score equals zero. So I create a variable called score and set it to zero. Next, I say score underscore txt, which is our dynamic text box, dot text, so it's text property, equals the score variable. So now in our movie, instead of a blank text box, if I hit control enter, we should see a zero there, and we do. If you don't see a zero there, then you have to look at the settings on your text box. Make sure it has the instance name and the settings that we have here. So now we have our score box. Now the next piece. The next piece is the sound. I'm going to skip that for now and I'm going to go into the um, collision detection. So I'll start off with the collision detection. 
Now the collision detection, we're going to say our cow, our function cow move, moves the cow, right? And we have a piece here that says if this dot y is greater than or equal to 400, remove the cow heads, right? So before we do that, before we move, remove the cow heads, what I want to do is I'm going to put a little space in here, and I'm going to put an if statement. And I say if this dot underscore y property, which is basically the cow, is greater than or equal to 225. And then I have an open curly brace, and I'm going to need a closed curly brace, right? So that's my if statement. If this dot y, and this will be the, the cow, you know, if you're not sure what this is, you can always trace this to see what is this, right? So trace this. What is this? What is uh, calling this cow move function? If I hit control enter and we sit here and we see over here, there's cow two, right? You can see that this are the cow heads that are falling. So I can get rid of that trace statement. And if it's greater than 225, we want to do some collision detection. Now, how did I come up with the number 225? Well, what I'll do is I'll say, let's see here, view, rulers, and I'll drag a ruler down. We're going to start catching the cow heads around, let's say, 200 or 210. We want to start checking to see if we can catch the cow heads, in this case, around pixel 200. You can see I have pixels here set on my ruler. And you can see here 200. This is about where we want to start checking for the collision detection. So I'm going to change that in my code a little bit. I'll go back, select this, open this up, and I'll say if this dot y is greater than or equal to 200, and now for the next piece, what are we going to do in here? How are we going to do our collision detection? Right? This is where that goes. And to do it, we're going to use another if statement. So we'll say if, open and close if, open curly brace, close curly brace. And we're going to say if, basically, the cow head is in the same x and y position as the catching character, then we'll have a collision. So I'll copy and paste that code. So in between these two parentheses, I'm going to paste in here if and I'll put it on a new line just so it's easier read. If math.absolute this.y, which is the cowhead's y, minus the cowboys.underscore.y property is less than 20 on the y axis, and then I'm going to put a double and sign, and I'll paste this again math.absolute of the x property minus the cowboy, who's our catcher's x property, is less than, let's say, 20. Now, down here, I actually did, let's see, 20. And then for the x, I did 30. So basically, what this is going to test for, the math.absolute function, the math class, the dot absolute method, will take the cowhead's y position minus it from the cowboy's y position, and then turn it into a positive number. So if, let's say, the y position is at 40, right, and the cowboy's position is at, let's say, 50, and you minus it, you're going to end up with negative 50. What it'll do, the math.absolute will turn it into a positive 50, and then we'll say, well, is 50 less than or equal to 20? And we'll say no, so this will not be a true scenario. But if the cow head is close enough to the cowboy's y position and the cowboy's x position, right? If it's close enough, we'll have a collision. And we're going to need to test this. We'll say, and I'll put this on a new line here. So you can see, trace hit. And we'll see if we get a hit. We'll hit control enter, right? Cowboy moves. And there you can see the hits happening on the left, right? There's the hits. So you can see here that we're getting the hits as soon as we get close enough to the cow head. Now, once again, this is just an if statement. But inside of the if statement, you've got one condition 
and double and sign another condition that both need to be true. Notice this closes off here. This is all one piece, right? And if this is true, then we traced the hit. 